Let's bring this project to an end. After I was done creating a couple of 2.5cm pieces from the copper wire, I continued by shortening the data out of the far left LED and the data in of the following right LED. Then I soldered my small wire piece between those two and repeated the same procedure for the rest of the top LEDs. At this point it is important to make sure that the bottom and top LEDs are aligned properly in the X and Y axis. If that is not the case, the bridge wire between the LEDs must be shortened even further until all of the LEDs create one straight line with the copper wire and the LED underneath them. Once everything looked fine, I repeated the data pin connection procedure for the 5 LEDs at the base plate. Afterwards, I marked the 4.1, 7.9 and 11.7 cm spots on the copper wires. This is where we need to solder the remaining 15 LEDs of the first wall. And always make sure that the lower edge is in the correct position with the help of a ruler. Once that is done, we can again shorten the inner data pins, pre-tin those and solder a piece of wire between all of them. And the first of 5 segments is complete. And it is also a good idea to test the LEDs regularly with a 5V power source. Now we can begin the construction of the second wall. The only difference is that the flat side of the LEDs face the opposite direction than the LEDs of the first wall. This way we can easily connect the data pins together in a snake pattern later on without the need of any construction troubles. But aside from this orientation shift of the LEDs, nothing else changes for the build of this cube segment. Before I started the third wall, I also tested the LEDs with the help of a data signal just to make sure that everything still works fine. Now for the third segment, you want to flip the orientation of the LEDs again. This way they face the same way as they do in the first wall. I think you should get the principle by now. And just like that, I successfully created the third, fourth and fifth segment of my LED cube. But as you can see, the individual walls are still pretty loose. We can fix this by connecting the 5 data outs of each wall to the 5 data ins of the next wall. And always use a bracket to make sure that they are all aligned properly. Afterwards, I removed my hot glue seal and flipped the cube upside down. Then I bent the power copper wires and used a 0.8mm drill bit to create 5 holes near the first data in pins and 4 holes next to the last data out pins. I inserted silver copper wire into the holes of the data in LEDs and soldered them to each layer's first data in pin. The same procedure applies to the 4 holes for the data outs, but obviously you don't need to solder a wire to the very last LED. Afterwards, I shortened the power wires and soldered 4 wires to the layer's data outs. Those need to be connected to the layer's data in in a way that the first layer's data out connects to the second layer's data in, and so on. This only leaves the first data in behind, which only receives a 150 ohm resistor for now. Now we can move over to the power wiring by using 0.75 square millimeter solid wire to connect each VCC and ground wire to each other. But don't forget that the orientation of the second and fourth wall is swapped around. Every now and then it is also a good idea to check for shorts with the continuity function of your multimeter. And most importantly, make sure that there is a horizontal and vertical connection line for your power wiring. If not, funky looking data corruption can be the consequence. Once the solar job was done, I tested the cube which still acted strange. The reason is that, even though I tried to prevent this, one LED was damaged. After replacing it, the cube finally worked like a charm and I celebrated this by gluing the data wire in place and soldering a thin wire to the 150 ohm resistor and a 1.5 square millimeter power wire to the joint VCC and ground pin. Then I created fitting female headers and a piece of stripboard for my Arduino Nano. 
soldered those headers in place and interrupted the copper traces between them. Afterwards, I positioned three terminal blocks next to 5V, ground, A0 and D2 and soldered those to the board. To power this construction, I used my 1.5mm wire again and soldered the other end in parallel to the power wiring of the cube itself. Then the data wire gets secured to the D2 terminal block and we can start the case wiring by soldering a wire to the tip pin of the DC jack. The other end of this wire then connects to one side of the main switch and before joining the case and cube, I soldered three thin wires to the potentiometer and secured it in its place. All that is left to do is soldering the ground wire of the cube directly to the DC jack and the VCC wire to the other side of the switch. The potentiometer's middle wire gets secured to the A0 pin, while the other two wires connect to 5 volts and ground. And the project is done! Well, almost. For supplying power, I went with this 5V 12A power supply, because the cube can draw up to 6.7A in the worst case. I just soldered a fitting barrel connector to 1.5mm wire, plugged it in and secured the wire with the help of the screw terminal. One last advice though, the LEDs like to freak out a bit with 5 volts, so make sure you adjust the voltage to around 5.5 volts. With that being said, all there is left to do is opening an example animation and changing the code a bit before finally uploading it. I hope you liked this project, if so don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let me know if you want a quick video on how to program custom animations, stay creative and I will see you next time.